Viewer discretion is advised. E-1261 sat in her containment cell and stared at her nutrition dispenser unit. The more she thought about it, the more she wanted her dead. And that's what she decided. Hey, guards, the dispenser's broken again. Come fix your junk, will ya? All right, all right, pipe down. Come here, let's put on your favorite things, a sensory deprivation device, and this here restraints. There we go, all snug and comfy. Just when the guards turned around, she broke free of her restraints and knocked them unconscious. She looked around and breathed a sigh of relief. Good, no one saw or heard a single thing. She stealthed her way to the hangar and hijacked a helicopter to Site 74, the location of her target, Dr. Madison Craggs. Hello, Craggs. <sighs> Took you six weeks to find me. Any old CI could have done it in two. Kept you waiting, huh? But that's irrelevant. No one leaves the chaos insurgency. Hello, everybody. I'm the Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Keter Class Object SCP-3033. SCP-3033, also known as a human weapon, refers to two anomalies. SCP-3033-1 refers to individual instances of Chaos Insurgency Mike units. These instances are humans who have received invasive cranial implants that grant rudimentary control of nerve impulses, as well as overriding biological limits. The implants on 3033-1 instances counteract pain receptors, override standard nervous signals, and interfere with the endocrine system to induce a variety of hormonal responses when activated. As a result, instances can withstand significant amounts of physical trauma before expiring and are unaffected by morale shocks. However, they lack fine motor control, training, and the ability to work cohesively. On the other hand, SCP-3033-2 refers to the handlers of SCP-3033-1 units. 3033-2 instances are previously non-anomalous humans who have been augmented with brain-computer interfaces in order to control 3033-1 instances. E-1261, an instance of 3033-1, was housed in an automated containment unit. So tell me, what was it like being under the influence of a, uh, a controller? I have movement, but not mine. It feels alien. Now that I think about it, it was more like a total lack of control over everything, like watching a videotape of someone else's life, complete with sounds, smells, tastes, touches. I was a passenger in my own head while someone else was driving. Can you elaborate further? I can't. I, I physically can't. It reminds me too much of them. Them? The people I killed. E-1261 then refused to communicate with Foundation staff for the next 16 days. Site 74. A nearby cottage was provided to Dr. Craggs, designated as POI 7701. She was placed under house arrest as per the terms of extraction. She heard the door opening with a heavy creak, and in came Dr. Carlson. Good day, Dr. Craggs. Dr. Carlson nodded and sat down as he activated the recorder. So, I told you about my work for this Chaos Insurgency Mind Control Project. The controller and the controlee, the driver in the car, the general and the soldier, the get on with it, please. Impatient, are we? Well, I've told you everything there is about the project. Oh, I should totally, totally tell you about the operations they took on, especially this one. Some guy named Kalasov? Suddenly, she fell silent. Dr. Craggs, are you all right? Oh, what? No, no, it jogged up some unpleasant memories. It was personal, to say the least. <clears throat> anyway, Kalasov, former Soviet interrogations guy, used to work with him for a while. Man's a piece of work. Kept count of how many bones he broke. I think it was somewhere in the thousands. And apparently, a guy from our side defected to his side, and they wanted him dead. I was tasked to oversee a team of Blue Falcon agents in an operation. And for this one, I secretly put in a bunch of extra bells and whistles in these poor sods' heads near immortal physicality and ruthless judgment. We armed them with all kinds of weapons, knives, assault rifles, you name it, and sent them on their merry way. It was a measly team of four soldiers, against an army of maybe 75 security personnel and a hundred others. Each and every one of them died a grisly death. My God, I went there after the action and it was absolutely beautiful. My subjects waiting around for orders, all bloodied and not a sign of wariness. The halls, corridors, each and every part of the interior was decorated with blood and body bits. 
How could I not be proud of my work, being in front of such marvelous sight? I took some photos. Want to see them? No, thank you. What about Kalasov? Dr. Craggs fell silent again. A gloomy expression took over her sunny disposition. He's dead. Okay, then. This concludes today's session. Dr. Carlson stopped the recording and got up. Before he exited the door, he asked, Dr. Craggs, mind if I ask what Kalasov did to you? Frankly speaking, you don't seem like the type of person who can be bothered by anything. He surely must have done you grievous harm. That jerk keyed my car. It was a vintage Italian sports car. You won't believe how much that scratch ruined the entire look of it. I tried everything, but it just couldn't be buffed out. So I specially inserted specific commands to murder that decrepit old bastard. And it was carried out beautifully. Seeing his own prized custom-made walking cane running through his body like a kebab. Oh, so beautiful. Brought a tear to my eye. But nothing can replace my car. That was forever ruined. Days later, E1261 expressed interest in talking about her time with the chaos insurgency again. We were sent to annihilate a facility with a special command inserted to exterminate some old guy. Everything was hazy. I get flashes of the action, but not the full picture. But this old man, I see his face whenever I blink. It was a sad, panicked face. He was wearing a black suit like he'd just attended a funeral. I killed everyone, then rushed at him. He hit me over and over again, but my body didn't let go. His face turned an ungodly shade of purple. Then, I blacked out. Next thing I remember, we were done. We were badly wounded, arms missing, blood everywhere. Then Dr. Craggs arrived. Show me your special assignment, she said. I didn't remember what my assignment was, but my body knew. I led her to a room. And then it all came back to me when I saw the old man hanging upright in the middle of the room with an ornate cane impaling him through the mouth, followed by flashes of screams and crunching noises. At some point, something snapped in my head. Chip burned out and for the first time, I had control of my mind and body. It was then I'd found my purpose. And what would that be? No one leaves the chaos insurgency, you say. E1261 lunged at her, but stopped just short of contact in frozen place. You thought you could use a weapon of my own creation to cut off this loose end, like some kind of absurd poetic justice? Huh, that's actually pretty funny. Kinda. E1261 got back up and charged at Dr. Craggs as she turned to pour herself a drink and again, she was stopped. Oh, you almost got me there. Quite the resilient one, aren't you? I knew this would happen. That's why I'd implanted a subdermal failsafe to prevent you people from killing me. But. Seeing how far you've come to get me, I think it's time to improve and upgrade your chip. Dr. Craggs <laughs> giggled and began digging through her drawer, retrieving a field surgical kit. E1261 could only watch in horror as tears rolled down her cheeks. Hey, Dr. Carlson, you watching this? Get a load of this live demonstration as I'm about to break down my own creation. She then began a live standing vivisection of E1261. Her screams of pain and horror echoed through the cottage. Hush, you! It's hard to cut cleanly when you're screaming bloody murder. Hmm, what shall I do with your controller? Ah, yes, I have an idea. Let's make sure you remember his face now. Don't want to lose memory of your target, do we now? After the incident, Dr. Craggs was relocated to another undisclosed location. E1261's handler was later found dead with a crushed windpipe.